And so we've reached the end of another week in 1 John, and today it's 1 John 4-7. 1 John 4-7 and 8 are two of my you know, favorite verses in the New Testament. Of course, I have a lot of favorite verses in the New Testament, but these are my favorite verses in 1 John, probably. So let's go ahead. Can you translate it? And here's my translation. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So we're going to see in a second, you know, God is love. It's going to be um, uh, the next verse defining or describing God in terms of love. We'll talk about that on Monday, Lord willing. But basically, we need to love each other because God is love. Um, and the one who loves shows that they've been born of God. Now, I don't think this is an absolute. There are people who are loving who aren't born of God. But it's a very clear sign. And on the other hand, I'm sure there are people who are born of God who are just having a bad day. Or maybe they're having a bad month or bad year. I don't know. Maybe they've had a bad decade. <laughs> um, you know, that's up for the Lord uh, to sort out. But, you know, if you're not loving and you're claiming to be from God, and of course, remember, for First John, love is very concrete, it has to do with helping others who are in need. And so if you're not loving um, and uh, you claim to be from God, well, there should be some alarm bells uh, going off there, at least according to First John. Okay, well, the translation, breaking it down a little bit more, beloved, good old vocative, let us love, we'll talk about the grammar here in a second, one another, because... The love from God is. Okay. We do get the impression from John that, that the Holy Spirit is a, is a love machine, <laughs> love engine that, that, that uh, empowers us to love. Love flows through us because we're plugged in um, to the Holy Spirit. And everyone who loves from God has been born. Some nice parsing waiting on the next slide. And knows God. To know God is to be known by God, according to John, is to love. Okay, a little bit in the grammar now. So what case is this? I think I've already said. What case? It's a case of address. You, beloved, it's evocative, yeah. Now this one here, men, do you know men? We are men. It's first person plural, probably active. Um, now there's been a crash here. That's a contract verb, agapao. So the alpha has crashed into something. Now, the thing is, if the alpha has crashed into an omicron, and this is indicative, it would end up as an omega. But if the alpha has uh, crashed into an omega, and it's subjunctive, it'd be an omega. And so you, you end up with an omega, no matter whether it's indicative or subjunctive. It could be, the form could be either. However, I would agree with, I think, everybody, um, that this is a subjunctive. And a first person plural subjunctive is a let us subjunctive. Let us love one another. And we call that a hortatory subjunctive, or in England, a hortatory subjunctive. Anyway, so a let us love. Now, alelus is the ninth kind of pronoun, the reciprocal pronoun, the one another pronoun. There are only three forms that this pronoun can take genitive plural, dative plural, and accusative plural. This is accusative plural because it's let us love what? Let us love one another, the reciprocal pronoun. Okay, because or for, what kind of clause does that introduce? You're right, a causal clause. Uh, because love is from God and everyone who loves. Okay, now we've seen this construction over and over and over and over again in First John. So make sure if you haven't gotten it, that this is the day that the Lord has made for participles. Oh, it's a participle. So yes, so own is the first participle ending you'll ever learn. It's a nominative masculine singular participle. It's agapao, all the letters of the present stem are there, so it's a present active participle. Nominative masculine singular from agapao. Now, so that's the parsing of the word itself. But what kind of function does this participle have? Well, the fact that it has an article on it tells us it's a what kind of participle? adjectival participle, okay? There are two options here. Is it uh, substantive? Well, there's more than two options, sorry. But um, an adjectival participle of this kind would normally have two main options. 
Is it substantive, meaning there's no noun there, or is it attributive, meaning that there's a noun there? There's no noun here, so it's substantive. So it is a participle, it's adjectival because it has the article, use who or that in the translation, everyone who loves. Um, it's substantive because there's no noun. It has to come up with the substance itself. Present active participle, nomin masculine singular from agapao. Then lastly, we have this. And the, the main thing here is the parsing of this. So if you start at the end and move backwards, my sai tai, uh, luo my, lue lue tai, it's a third person singular, tentatively middle or passive, okay? Um, that looks like it's, it's um, fried, and it is, but it's not, it's not lengthened because of the subjunctive. Sorry. Um, this is genao. It's a contract verb. And when you add endings, when you add stuff on to the end of a contract verb, often the, uh, the vowel, gana, and alpha in this case, will lengthen. Now, <clears throat> notice there's no connecting vowel. <clears throat> there's no crash and there's no connecting vowel. So the ending has been shoved right on the stem. When does that happen? It happens in the perfect middle or passive. And in fact, when I go to the front, I do see this reduplication on the front. So this is in fact a perfect passive par uh, indicative, per a perfect passive indicative, third singular from ganao, um, has been born. Has because it's perfect, been because it's passive, and born because it's ganao. Okay, so there you have the grammar, which leads us to the pronunciation. See if you can pronounce the first line. Here's my pronunciation. Agape toy, agapomen, aleleus, hoti, he, agape, ek, tu, theu, esten. And now the second line. Kai, pas, ho, agapon, ek, tu, theu, Gegenetai, kai genoske, ton theon. So now let me finally try to read it at normal speed. Agape toi, agapomen aleleus, hoti he agape, ek tu theu esten. Kai pas ho agapon, ek tu theu gegenetai, kai genoske, ton theon. Okay, there you have our Greek for this week from 1st John.